listening to, to Ian. We need to be clear on what, what the problem is that we're trying to solve. Um, clearly we can measure the problem in terms of the number of people who are at risk of exclusion and you know, that may be in excess of 100 million. But we don't have a problem in terms of solution at ground level. That we can hear the story of what's going on all across Europe, we know it from our own network of ECL centres. So just between tele centres and ECL centres, we know there are tens of thousands of centres. There are schools all across Europe who have the solution on the ground. So the problem is not the delivery of a solution at ground level. The problem is not identifying a solution for the individual. Uh, the problem is how do we scale that to the extent that we need to, to address the needs of, of 100 million people. If we said to Ian, within your network, have you the capacity to double the number of people you engage with, he'd probably say, yes, we could do it. It's not a question of his capacity. Ultimately, it comes back to uh, political will and, unfortunately, funding. From our point of view, uh, we're very positive about the digital agenda. Uh, we came out very strongly to, to welcome it. It's something that we are very engaged with and, and supportive of. And it goes back to the fact that our uh, reason for being, our, our mission is about empowering people through technology. And our view is very simple. We see it in terms of we need to enable people to use technology proficiently. The technology exists, it has the potential to empower, but we need to ensure that people can use it proficiently. Our take on it is that you do that through certification programs. It must be done in a very formal and structured way. It must be done with an outcome that gives people a, a statement of confidence that they can use in terms of uh, employability and, and further development. So our, our activity is across three strands. Advocacy, in terms of working with, with government and international bodies in promotion of digital literacy. Obviously, developing our certification program and delivering that globally. So in terms of scale, we've had about 11 million people through the program. It's across uh, 41 languages, over 140 um, countries. But our approach to the issue is, is try to keep it as simple as we can. Uh, what we advocate, what, what we um, talk to government about, number one, is about the importance of digital literacy, and I don't think anybody in the room uh, would question that its importance. Once people buy into digital literacy and the importance of it, then we say, well, we must emphasize certification. It must end up in an individual having a certificate that has a recognizable value. And if you buy that, then we say, if you're interested in certification, yes, we have our version of it. We're not uh, saying it is the only version. We think it's very good, obviously. But we do think that a certification is important. And in talking to the Commission or talking to government or international bodies, what we emphasize are the three points on the right. There must be a policy commitment. There must be dedicated funding. And there must be widespread availability. Dedicated funding is the key. And certainly with the digital agenda, we see a new emphasis on prioritizing digital literacy within uh, ESF funding. And that's fine. It should never be down to a choice between building a road and investing in people. It shouldn't even be down to investing in broadband and investing in people. It must be dedicated. It must be ring-fenced. It must be funding that's available for Ian's network, for our network, for schools, for vocational education and training so that we can say it is possible uh, to achieve uh, the kind of numbers that we need to achieve if we invest in it. It struck me this morning, if we were in the agriculture industry, or we were farmers, we would be talking about subsidy for litres of milk, or subsidies for cattle, or subsidies for hectares of uh, land that are planted with forestry. Why are we not talking about subsidies for people? Why is there not a subsidy, a digital literacy subsidy from Europe or from government that is available for, for people? So what we're seeing with the digital agenda is policy commitments and the potential for dedicated funding, the problem obviously is, is widespread availability. Our, our response and our commitment has been uh, quite public. We've said we're going to engage with 5 million citizens to ensure that they acquire digital skills and are certified in that. Uh, we're looking to promote digital skills development in, in education. We're looking to work with marginalized groups and we're looking to work um, with, with member states. And obviously we have an infrastructure like telecenters. Probably some of those telecenters are also ECDL centers. Can I get 
Social Service, Monsieur Hersens Christian, Hersens Christian, and the Mondeo Conciergerie. Merci. <laughs> so the infrastructure is 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 there on on ground level. What what we're missing is the emphasis at a governmental level on policy and on funding. So what we're trying to do is educate those who are uncommitted. Everybody in this room is committed to the cause of digital literacy. Our challenge is, is to engage with people who are less committed. So what we're trying to do is use our network, make sure the digital agenda is known outside of the people who know it already, and to engage at a political level with, with government. What we're looking to do is have a series of, of roundtable events. With ten countries already where those events are planned, we're looking to invite key governmental people uh, to talk to them about you know, the issue of digital inclusion and then bring that back and have a, a European roundtable uh, later in the year so we can feed back what we're learning from national level in, into governmental or into commission level. The, the, the challenge, as I say, is to engage with the people who are not engaged and the people who have the ability uh, to influence what happens on, on the ground. I think one of the, the, the key challenges is fighting the cause of digital literacy when you are part of these three pillars. Everybody agrees there is a need to invest in the digital technology infrastructure and there's big emphasis on broadband availability all across Europe. There's a lot of emphasis on what I call content infrastructure, the availability of content, the security of content, transacting across Europe. But our interest is in digital skills infrastructure. But how do we build that and, and how do we measure progress? The metrics that have been talked about in, in terms of measuring progress on the digital agenda tend to focus on the availability of, of broadband or, or the, the amount of time somebody goes online in a month. But that's not really measuring the digital skills infrastructure available across Europe. We're all keenly aware that, that digital literacy is important, but even the term digital literacy is starting to become uh, a little bit overused. So we started to look at, in terms of digital, uh, layers of digital proficiency. Uh, we, we talk about it in terms of there being four layers, starting at the bottom with digital awareness. That A lot of programs are required to bring people to a point of engaging properly with technology. We would class those as digital awareness programs. Basic digital literacy are the skills and knowledge required to participate in a modern society. Beyond that, when you move into the workplace, there is a higher level of proficiency required. We call it digital competence. And then in some particular job roles, the power user of technology, still a user, we would class that as digital expertise. So when we look at the European problem, it's not, it's not generic, it's not one size fits all. We're not looking for everybody to be digital experts. We're talking about everybody to engage in a digital awareness program who is uh, resistant to technology or unfamiliar with it, and then progress through the levels appropriate to their needs. Digital literacy is only one level, and it's not enough for people who are looking at employment that is becoming more and more driven by technology. As I said at the start, we see certification as key to that. So we have a range of programs, and I'm not here to sell them to you. But the idea is if you're looking at employability, you must have a statement of your competence that is understood across Europe. And obviously with the ECDL we think we have that. It introduces uh, a standard. But the value of certification is not just in terms of the individual having that statement. It gives you value in terms of ensuring that the training effort that has gone in has been of the highest quality because it measures the outcome of that uh, training effort. And for the policy makers and for the departments of finance and the, the economists, it gives you a statement of achievement for an investment in people. If there is to be a subsidy, a digital literacy subsidy, we can measure that and say, your investment has resulted in X tens or hundreds of thousands of people who are now certified to the appropriate level. Just a brief comment, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm rushing you slightly. Uh, in terms of ICT and education, I started uh, in education. I was involved in professional development with teachers in, in the use of computers. There has always been a debate about IT and education, is it about learning to use ICT or is it about using ICT to learn? And it is, uh, to me, it's a false debate. Anybody who's leaving second level uh, education, and certainly third level, is going into, hopefully, into the workplace. They should leave with the skills required by the workplace. So learning to use ICT is an important component of the education system. 
clearly technology has the ability to enhance teaching and learning. So using ICT to learn is equally important. No more, no less. But it shouldn't be lost. We shouldn't be talking to teachers in terms of one or the other. Students should learn how to use ICT properly. Teachers should learn how to use ICT. And when they're comfortable with the technology, if they're good teachers, they'll figure out themselves how to use that technology in their classroom. We don't approach literacy in the same way. We don't have this debate about, is there formal instruction in reading and writing? Children go to school and they're taught in a very structured way how to read and write. And that literacy is then used across other areas of, of education. It needs to be the same with technology. We need to do it in a formal way, teaching uh, teachers and teaching students how to use technology, and then allowing those tools to be used to enhance teaching and learning. So our, our conclusion. Firstly, that we are all committed. The Commission is committed, the stakeholders are committed. We need to focus on the uncommitted. This digital assembly, this digital agenda assembly is great, it's very positive. The risk in it is that we are talking to the people who are already committed. We need a roadshow, we need a digital assembly roadshow in every country. It doesn't have to be on this scale. We need to get 10 people, key people from each government in a room with stakeholders, with the Commission saying this is what needs to happen. We need to reach out to those who are influential but who are perhaps ambivalent about what we're doing. We talk about the need for long-term strategy, which is true. They need to be permanent solutions. But it doesn't need to be long-term thinking. We need short-term urgency. We can't wait for 10 years to solve this problem. We know from our work internationally, Europe the rest of the world is not waiting for Europe to become digital. They're not sitting back waiting for Europe to become innovation leaders. They're doing it in the Middle East, they're doing it in Africa, they're doing it in Asia and in the Americas. So it, it is not that there is time for Europe to become digital. It must be addressed with urgency. The same sophistication that we bring to the infrastructure elements of broadband, we need to bring that to digital skills. You know, we talk about the speeds of broadband, we need to talk about levels of digital proficiency. So we need programs that start with the, the dispossessed around digital awareness. We need programs that move people into skills that are employability skills, moving from digital literacy to digital competence and for some people then to digital expertise. But I'll end with what I said at the start. It's clear already from what we're hearing. The infrastructure is there on the ground uh, in local communities, in schools, in the education sector, in vocational training sector. The problem is in the middle between the Commission and what happens on the ground, and that's the problem that we need to solve. 